We are with the amazing Tova Felchu at 54 Below. Tova, you are hysterically funny. How much of this show has you talking? Um, well, I play characters sometimes within songs like Doll Williams when I was a boy, uh, which I, I loved being a, a tomboy as a child. So and sometimes I'm within characters and sometimes I'm in monologue. <clears throat> When I speak, I speak usually as different characters, obviously at different ages. I play people from 9 to 90, uh, but it's peppered with brand new material, whether it's clear day, uh, we're dealing with the fourth dimension, the fact that time may not be linear at all. And if time isn't linear, but time is quantum, that we can leap from one um, moment in time to another without transition, without hesitation and effortlessly, then maybe we, don't, we can discard the notion of linear aging altogether. So if, if an actor has known this ever since we've had an agent, right? <laughs> I need a 30 year old. I'm a 30 year old, I need St. Joan. I can be St. Joan. How about Golda Meir? I'm Golda Meir. What about Othello? I can be Othello. Just with the proper lighting, I can do it. I'll make it work. So we know that, and maybe that's what helps keep us young, but they've actually shown medically that self-care, self-image, self-worth, influences the cells of your body, that depression is related to osteoporosis, and that a positive mental attitude can deliver, can deliver a very healthful life. I mean, we're all going to die, but the question is, how are we going to live until we die? And I want to be alive when I die. That's what I want. So is this more of a spiritual journey as well as... I think it's more of an, of an anthem at this point, because I'm, um, I'm in the sixth decade of my life now, and um, facing the possibility of senior citizenship, it's not that far away. I've been on Broadway for 40 years, and I have no intention of leaving my work until I, until I leave my body. And uh, I'm climbing Mount Kilimanjaro right after the show you closes. You really are doing that? I really am. Oh I'm God. flying to Nairobi on February 22nd and spending two days there uh, at a wonderful, uh, mansion called the Wayne Hotel and then also visiting Giraffe Manor and visiting an orphanage for elephants and uh, oh, it's just fun. wonderful things and that because you can fly from Nairobi to Arusha in an hour and Arusha is the um, foothill of Mount Kilimanjaro and I joined the expedition on uh, Friday the 27th and we do our first um, hike that day and then we start to assault the mountain on the 28th and we do so for six days. Wow. And just what made you want to do this? Because I still can. I really believe I still can. And I think that that window of time, uh, when I'm nearer to 70 than I am to 60, may close. And I, I want to, I actually judge my trips now by altitude. <laughs> I, I, I've been to Tibet, Bhutan, Huayna Picchu, which is the, mat, the mountain above right. Machu Picchu, uh, the Atacama Desert. Uh, I plan to go to Mongolia. It's not very high, but it's, you know, you have to be hardy. And to uh, Madagascar to track the orangutans. I'm an adventure traveler. You know, I think that an extension of our career, I've worked so long and so diligently, and um, I said, what do I want to do with my savings? Well, I don't need a new dress, but I love a new adventure. And the act deals with adventure. I mean, I sing... It's so funny. I'm looking at what I say. I sing Beautiful by Carol King, mm -hmm. as sung by a 103-year-old. <laughs> I, I, I um, talk about uh, senior citizens and their tremendous contribution. It's very funny. I talk about my love affair with my husband and um, sing the wonderful tune by, um, by Ewan McCall called The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Um, I sing... Uh, new words uh, about I talk about my children, but it's always Corey about Aston, right? right, right. It's exactly. It's about discovery. What what do we st discover? That's why I sang. I'm flying for you today. It isn't just I'm flying. You know, Peter Pan showing off. It's my God, I'm flying. Why is aging optional? Because we've got options. We have choices in life. You know, Catherine Hepburn. They asked her how old she was, and she would say, "As you see me, gentlemen. As you see me." Now, somebody from my generation knows you first from operetta, then from TV movies of the week. Yes. Your journey has been so vast. Yes. I think um, when I was a little kid, I was at the National Music Camp. I got an award for excellence in two fields of the arts. I was just trying to think. It's called a Phi Mu Gamma Award. 
and uh, I would have never brought it up had you not asked me, but it was for piano and, and drama, and theater, piano and drama, so I was a pianist. And I couldn't win concertos. I got to the finals two seasons in a row, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to become a professional pianist. I can't bear to be near my own mediocrity. And I got parts in, in HMS Pinafore. I played Cousin Hebe. There were 110 children in that workshop, 2,000 campers at National Music Camp, and I was chosen to sing. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. I said, wait a minute. This bodes well. And I pursued a life in in, in plays, actually, that speak on pitch. I, I worked in musicals all during my early career for Richard Rogers, um, Sarah Va, for Mitch Lee, and of course, that's why I was so thrilled to return to Pippin, that Yentl, which I loved, and Holocaust, the miniseries, took a tremendous turn in my career, and I was known as a, a dramatic actress. But I believe in laughter and chocolate on a daily basis. <laughs> and when is your show? My show is February 19th, 20th, and 21st. Please come see me because we can't extend. I'm climbing that mountain starting the 22nd. Thank you so much. Thank you.